if they win this constituency the party invariably wins the elections in the karnataka elections there was one candidate who had more wealth than her entire weight in gold this 88 candidates who got zero votes they didn't even vote for themselves <laughs> i mean how crazy is that in 2014 we were playing around with election data and microsoft saw this and said look why did you come over we have a deal with cnn and ibm to create put a, a large touch screen in their office and cover the elections live and we are the technology partner and your work on the analysis and the visualizations look promising we worked with cnn and ibm covered this on national television i tell you some of the most interesting stories that we sure, have please. Okay. that time uh, this was rajdeep sardesai and uh, bupendra chobe who were so bupendra chobe took on an incredible challenge he said let me be the analyst myself people can ask me questions i will answer it live with data that comes on the screen and some of the things that came up were incredible and the way he was playing around with it combining his domain knowledge with the data somebody asked for instance is there a constituency that acts as a bellwether if they win this constituency the party invariably wins the elections he flushes this around and says look until last election there were three such constituencies a b and c but as of this election until now there is only one constituency which if a party wins then it's guaranteed to win the election that is faridabad so let's see in this election if faridabad wins another really interesting question was tell me which election had the largest number of candidates contesting for it he yeah, starts playing around and he says you know look if you look at the history of elections in tamil nadu we see that there was this constituency madurantakam which had 90 candidates standing for elections 90 is huge but it is not the highest because in the next year and he shows the visuals palipet and avarkurichi had 264 and 249 people standing for elections so that's massive right if you take for instance what the ballot sheet looks like and that's almost like a mini booklet where you have to flip through the candidates and find the names of the candidates but and then he moves on to the 1991 elections and shows that there is modakurichi where 100 1033 candidates stood for elections now it's not a booklet it's practically a book it, it might even be the telephone directory of modakurichi that stood for elections and he goes on to look at the names he says uh, palnisami ke palnisami ke palnisami ke palnisami ke i mean if you are palnisami ke how do you know which palnisami ke you are to vote for yourself which possibly was a problem because there are 88 candidates he scrolls down and says 88 candidates who got zero votes which means that after standing for election they didn't even vote for themselves <laughs> i mean how crazy is that and then goes on to the history there was a farmers protest so these people literally stood outside the election office booth and whenever somebody came they gave them 500 rupees and said go register yourself to vote and because of that the election commission then changed the minimum cut off from 500 rupees to 25000 rupees i mean the story just flowed as he did the dash but all we had to do was put our logo at the bottom it was fun it was personally also very enriching experience for me because while he was doing all of this talking i gently snuck behind the tv pretending to look at a monitor called home and said look turn on cnn and ibn you'll see me on tv <laughs> so uh, so were these questions coming in live because it would be very yeah. hard to produce this data live like oh no the we cre- so what we do is not give answers but we build the technology that gives the answers so it was made easy enough for him to be able to play around with it live and he did like what technology did you build to answer to 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 get that data on my fingertips that quickly so he said okay so this is the election scene in 1967 in tamil nadu where you have each of these circles representing one constituency so that's perambalur which had 10 candidates standing for election here are the 10 candidates and look <clears throat> couple of them in dmk a couple of them in congress blah 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 now in uh, this was in 1971 but in 1977 now things changed because there is a new party that seems to have come in and swept the elections which is the admk and it, there's been an overall spurt in the number of candidates blah 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 he moves on like this and says oh 89 lots of candidates but nothing stands out and this is where you see pallipet and avarakurichi being huge outliers which is crazy but all of that pales in comparison with the modakurichi election of 1030 of uh, 1033 candidates and look at the names of the candidates and this is what he did which is scroll down 
and see oh okay palni sami ke palni sami ke palni sami ke palni sami ke which is crazy right and here are the people that actually got zero votes and obviously nachi muttu stood for election and did not vote for himself nor did his name say without the s and yeah this was how the uh, story unfolded is it, is it is it because they were like just people didn't reach that page no they uh, they were asked to vote uh, <laughs> because they were given five weeks no uh, no not asked to vote also stand in the election and that doesn't mean they have to come and vote or even if they come to vote they don't have to vote for themselves they didn't particularly want to stand for election they probably use their vote to make whoever they want the, the the point i wanted to make anand was that the visualization is what prompted these questions the the point i was trying to make was that it wasn't like the question came to me for example the question could have been uh, who is the richest person or who is the most educated person who stood in election in uh, in this year now you can't answer those questions live because the raw data has to be so once you sh- give me this visualization then no oh, yeah this session helps me answer these interesting questions but the set of questions is actually defined by the visualization that's already there on the screen so you're absolutely right on that in part because so I'll explain the good and the bad meaning um both the questions who was the richest or who was the most educated were both questions that gupen acharya would have been able to pull out the right visualization for because we had both the data and the set of visualizations to answer potentially any kind of question that may have come about an example of a question we would not have been able to answer if it had come was whose wife was the most educated right or spouse rather yeah so where, where, the, where, the where are you getting this raw data from like education or or the richest or the so, poorest like election commission has uh, affidavits published of each of the candidates declarations which has their education data demographic data wealth data not just wealth but what kind of assets what kind of uh, debt for instance in the karnataka elections we realized that there was one candidate who had more wealth than her entire wealth in weight in gold and we had yeah put together the visualizations for all of these so a part of it is preparation but the good part is it's possible to take a given data set and say now let's create every possible kind of question out of it which is so, so not too hard so you created it all all of it was a publicly available data set instead of having some aggregate yes. mostly um, the only semi private data set was the streaming results of the elections which cnn and ibn had purchased from nielsen and they get access to it earlier and at a higher granularity than the public okay so okay. tell me this like you 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 saying you got the data from election commission and they published the data publicly probably on their website but uh, okay. how did you ingest this data what was that that effort like into your sql tables or whatever right so the bulk of the data was in textual pdf files with one exception i think there was one election in orissa in 1989 or sometime which had uh, scanned pdfs which was tricky but the rest was at least text the next step is convert that pdf to text and then extract it into excel like tables which took its own sweet time because we had to figure out oh okay this is a page number get rid of it oh in some cases there is a, a person's name that spills on to the next row people in gujarat for instance have a long name plus a long alias and that messes up things so handle all of these exceptions and we released the score as open source it's on github so any election uh, scraping result can now be automated once it's there in the form of csv yeah then it gets on to the database which serves as the back end for the visuals